Everybody hear me? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> nice. 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 Really isn't me. <laughs> so, good evening, everyone. Hi. I'm here to tell you about a few opportunities I had while growing up in Palm Springs during the 50s and 60s. So, let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a magical place on land not so far, far away. It was called Kindergarten. <laughs> what a place. All my friends were there. I would take a sunny walk to school in the morning, talk to my friends, usually work on a small art project, have a snack, and take a morning nap. <laughs> Wait, that sounds like what I do today at age 70. <laughs> And how could you not learn something with all that natural northern light beaming into this Albert Frey designed classroom? And a great teacher who greeted me every morning with, Hi, Hi Greg. Greg. <laughs> oh, the sad part of this story is that a few years ago, some smart educators decided to update these classrooms. So what did they do? They hired a new architect and bulldoze the entire oh, Albert Frey oh, campus. No. Smart. <laughs> but hey, back to my class photo. I'm in my James Dean look-alike Levi jacket. <laughs> class was fun, but I soon found out the best two things about kindergarten were the twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> Their dad had a ski boat, and I was often invited to go water skiing with them at the Salton Sea. The North Shore Yacht Club was just being built, and that was the place to be, so off we would go. We would ski all morning, then we would stop for a great picnic lunch, and later head for home. As we left, I remember thinking, hmm, there was something about that building. What was it? I soon learned, of course, it was an Albert Frey, that guy again. And that's not him coming in. <laughs> well, I actually met Albert Frey, whoops, uh, at his home one day when my friend, Jeff Williams, son of architect Stu Williams, and I were digging an underground port in the desert next to the Frey house. This is the Stu Williams living room looking west. The Frey House was located just beyond those trees. We were digging away when Albert came outside to see what we were doing. He didn't mind what we were doing, he just wanted to know what we were doing. I was introduced to him by my friend Jeff, and Albert said, Oh, hi, hi Greg. Greg. Hey, Greg. <laughs> I know your parents very well from around town. He seemed like a nice guy, but there was something odd about him. What was it? I soon found out what it was. His daily exercise. <laughs> How about this one? Albert thought standing on his head for a few minutes was a healthy way to start each day. He lived to be 95, maybe this is why. But enough about Albert Frey. Another fun thing to do in the desert back then was horseback riding. For me, coin stables was the best. It was located in the middle of town just north of Pockwitz Way on Caballeros. There really was no road. Caballeros was just a dirt trail in the 50s. Today, that is just across the street from our convention center to the east in the open lot. This tree and the wagon trail are the only things left from the old stables. Back then, you could ride through the open desert all the way to the airport and beyond. My friend, Mark Jones, now Dr. Jones, would meet me there, and we would ride out to the airport past Frank Sinatra's house, known as Twin Palms. There was no wall in the back, and sometimes we would see Frank picking grapefruit in his backyard. Hey, Frank. <laughs> we would ride out to the airport, and if a plane came in, <laughs> riders could ride right up to the airplane and meet the passengers. <laughs> That didn't happen anymore today. <laughs> when it was time to head back to the stables, we didn't need to lead those horses. We just had to hold on for dear life. 
because they knew where they were heading and they would just take off. What a fun time that was, just hang on. After our ride, we would go to Mark's house on Chandler's Road for lunch. One Saturday, Mark and I were in the backyard playing and I heard someone next door on the patio singing my dad's favorite song. I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own. A doll that other fellows cannot steal. Wow. I just had to look over the fence and see who it was. I got a patio chair and put it up against the fence. I must have made a lot of noise because as I slowly peeked over the fence, there they were, right in front of me, the Mills Brothers. I saw them and they saw me. And the lead singer said, who are you? So I told him, my name was Greg. And the paper doll was my dad's favorite song. And I liked it too. And then he said, well, hi, hi Greg. Greg. <laughs> they seemed to be surprised that I knew who they were and the name of their 1942 number one hit song. They smiled and then said they had to get back to their rehearsing. Well, that was okay with me. I had to get back to playing. <laughs> now you may be asking, why were the Mills brothers in the backyard of this neighborhood home? Well, in 1959, Black entertainers were not allowed to stay in hotels in Palm Springs. So arrangements were made for them to stay in private residences. This included other stars such as the Ink Spots, Eartha Kitt, Louis Armstrong, and the great Nat King Cole, who later bought a home here in Palm Springs. I remember getting home late that afternoon and Dad said, get in there and get cleaned up and get that horse smell off of you. We were going out to dinner. Well, guess where we were going that night? The Chi Chi Club on Palm Canyon. Oh, yeah, it was a woo. My dad wrote the insurance for the owner, Mr. Irwin Schulman. So we were always seated right up front for dinner and the show. I was lucky enough to go with my parents to the Chi Chi quite often and see a number of great shows. That night, I remember looking at the table next to us. Comedian Jerry Lewis was sitting right behind my mom. There were always stars and celebrities in the audience at the Chi Chi. So here we were in the starlight room at the Chi Chi. Yeah, look at that thing. When the show started, the curtain opened, and to my surprise, the Mills Brothers walked up on the stage. Lucky for me, the lead singer looked down and saw me and my mom and dad. He turned back to the others and said something, and they just stopped. Now this is the cool part. When he turned back, they all, all three of them said, Hi, Greg. And they're catching on. <laughs> then the lead singer pointed to me and said, This is for your dad. Aww. And their first song that evening was Paper Doll. Aww. couldn't believe it, and I remember looking at Jerry Lewis's expression, like, who's this kid? <laughs> <laughs> now, my dad had a grin from ear to ear. He was so impressed, he didn't even make me mow the lawn next day at home. <laughs> However, a few nights later, he said, you need to get a job. <laughs> I'm thinking, Dad. It's 1959, I'm 10 years old. What do I need to a job? As it turned out, he had the perfect job for me. Dad had joined Indian Wells Country Club as a charter member, along with a few of his golfing buddies. I would go with Dad to the golf club and walk along the fairways looking for lost golf balls. I would find a dozen or more balls each time I went out. Back in the locker room, I would sort out the good ones clean them, put them in egg cartons that I had brought with me. I sold them for four dollars a dozen to other partners. One day, Dad and I were in the locker room and he introduced me to two of his friends. Dad said, Greg, meet Desi Arnaz. I thought, hey, Dad, this guy's name is Ricky Ricardo. <laughs> but 
Okay. Next, he introduced me to his other friend, band leader Phil Harris. Now they both said, Hi, Greg. Hey. Well, I sold both of them a dozen balls each that day. And they became my biggest customers from then on. I was making so much money, I enlisted the help of a financial team. <laughs> Yeah, okay, led by my dad in the plaid shirt, and two uncles, plus two toy store owners, a bartender, a liquor store owner, and a car salesman. <laughs> These guys would come over to our house every Thursday night to play cards. They called it their prayer meeting. <laughs> they told me to put every penny in the bank, so I did, and it paid off. When the Bank of America opened a new branch office in 1961, the manager, Harold West, one of my dad's golfing buddies, offered me the number one savings account. Here's Harold's letter to me. Dear Greg, you have been chosen to have the number one savings account at the new Bank of America. Wow, not bad. Mm -hmm. On the bank's opening night, I made a beeline for Harold's desk, and, and he said, Hi, Greg. We completed the, this really happened. I mean, I, I, I can't make this stuff up. We completed the paperwork for the number one account, and after 58 years, I still have that account with the Bank of America. And when I walk into the bank nowadays, all the managers say, Hi, Greg! <laughs> really? I must say, it's been wonderful growing up in a small town like Palm Springs, where most everybody that I know still takes the time to say hi. Yeah. <laughs>